All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the ULA Vulcan Rocket Parts mod, which is being made by forum user Super Penguin 160 And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build a Vulcan rocket, which for any of you who don't know, the Vulcan rocket is a conceptual design being made by the United Launch Alliance, which is a joint venture between Lockheed Martin and Boeing to try and make the next generation of hopefully affordable rockets to send things into space with. And uh, that's pretty interesting. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what this does all add in. Now let's grab a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake, move it up for a couple of the longer parts, and then head to our mod filters to just have on Vulcan. And sadly, we have no command pods for this as the Vulcan is purely just a launch vehicle to put whatever you do need into space. So we're gonna be starting down here in fuel tanks, and the first is the Advanced Cryogenic Evolved Stage, or ACES, which as you can see here is a liquid fuel and oxidizer tank holding 1,809 liquid fuel and 2,211 oxidizer, but is also a decoupler and specifically it will decouple up here to then release the payload. Now besides the uh, payload decoupler, you'll also notice we have uh, four attachment points down at the bottom of this, four engines, and then two oddly placed uh, attachment points up here, which aren't that odd considering they are for the placement of custom designed fairings, which we'll get to down here in a little bit. Now the next one we have is the Vulcan Centaur Upper Stage, which is very similar, just a heck of a lot thinner than the Aces, and only has one engine attachment point down at the bottom, but still of course the two upper ones for the fairings. Now the next tank that we have, oh actually forgot to mention how much this one holds, the Vulcan one will hold a 684 liquid fuel and 836 oxidizer. Now onto the Vulcan main tank which is big. A very, very big and very American tank. I mean, come on. It's got the stars and stripes and everything. That is... That's America right there. And it has quite a bit of fuel uh, that it can hold at 5,292 liquid fuel and 6,468 oxidizer. Now as for attachment points, it's pretty standard having one at the top and one at the bottom, but we can kind of mess around with the bottom one because we do have a uh, multi-engine fairing thing down here, which we'll get to in a little while. Now next we're moving on to the engines. The first of which being the BE-4, which is the sort of main drive engine for this thing to go on the main tank. A very cool engine there. I do like the design and look of it. Very, very cool indeed. And of course, as for power, it has a maximum thrust of 750 kilonewtons in space and 310 ISP, again in a vacuum. And a six degree gimbling range, very handy. Now the next engine is the RL-10, and this one's specifically designed to go in this upper stage where we're at right now and uh, this thing has a maximum of a of uh, 60 kilonewtons there 60 kilonewtons in vacuum and an isp of 345 in vacuum and again a six degree gimbling range very nice little engine so let's pop both of those off and zoom back out to have a look then at the gem 63 xl solid rocket booster oh yeah it's a beautiful one We've got, got a very nice looking engine here. It has, of course, its own little uh, cone on top, so you don't have to worry about placing anything there. And the engine, which sort of does uh, go out to the side a bit, so you'll want to make sure you have these uh, nice and symmetrical around your vessel, or else you could, you know tip yourself over a bit. And this thing has a maximum thrust of 100 kilonewtons and an ISP of 220, both in vacuum and overall 344 solid fuel for this. So a uh, lovely, lovely little solid rocket booster there. Now onto command where we have nothing, structural nothing. Then in coupling, we do have the Gem 63 XL decoupler, which of course is specifically designed to, you know, pop on the gem 3 there or gem 63 rather 
and bam, you have the decoupler. If I would have actually placed it centered, it would have looked a lot better. But there you go, a lovely decoupler. And then we move on to payload, where we have the fairings. And we have them in several different sizes. We have the small payload fairing, which you can see right here. It doesn't exactly work for this particular uh, uh, version of the ship, but if you go with the smaller canister, the Vulcan one, uh, the small fits quite nicely. We then have the sort of medium one here, which is the Vulcan which does fit here quite nicely. And then we have the Vulcan large payload fairing, which, <laughs> as you can see, is um, even bigger. That's a big, big fairing. Let's actually pop this thing on here real quick. So yeah, if you can, uh, you know, fit a lot of stuff in there potentially. Now again, this one's sort of meant to go with the smaller tank because it actually all kind of fits inside the fairing together. Uh, but still, you could use it on this one just to have a lot more stuff up here if you so desired. But there we go, those are our fairings. Uh, we have then in aerodynamics several fun things, and the first is the Ace's Engine Shroud. Now this is important for this particular one, because of course, if you remember, this is a uh, four attachment points at the bottom for this specific little engine here. So you'd have four going all around, which would make it kind of difficult for you to then have another stage. So what we actually have is there's another attachment point inside the tank, specifically, for this thing right here. So it will attach to the tank itself and then giving you enough space for all of your engines in here to then attach to the main vessel. And it is, of course, a decoupler, so you can use it to separate these two stages, which is always handy. We also have another one of these for specifically when you go between the Vulcan and the... A uh, smaller Vulcan Centaur upper stage, as you can see right there, it sort of uh, tapers towards that smaller design. Uh, so again, though, same purpose as with uh, this one here. Now, the last is made for the main tank engine, where you'd pop this on the very bottom of the main tank, and then you have a nice fairing protecting your two engines that you could then place in here, right at those two attachment points. So you'd have a nice protected engine, which is always nice to have. So there we go, there are those fairings. And uh, everything in aerodynamic, we have nothing in ground. We do have a fun inflatable heat shield in thermal, which you can, you know, use for whatever mission. And once your payload's coming back into the atmosphere, inflate, and there you go. You have a nice big heat shield to protect your vessel with, which is always nice and convenient. And then I believe that is it until we hit utility, where we have the Vulcan Parafoil, which is a parachute for the Vulcan, which um, is one of those square or, well, rectangular parachutes rather than round. So a nice, nice little thing overall, though a bit a large of a package. I would prefer a, uh, a bit smaller of something here because it is just really long. It's just a big stick, basically. So hopefully, maybe that'll get trimmed down in the future. But for now, let us go and actually take a look at one of these fully put together and uh, go down to the Vulcan ship that I built here, which <laughs> is just a nice, fun, big rocket, which as you can see, oh, there we go, I forgot to <laughs> de-inflate that. There we go, perfect, that is now nice and cozy inside the fairing. But there you are, that is the Vulcan sort of all put together, and of course you could add more of these solid rocket boosters all around, but uh, you know, we're just kinda gonna roll with it for this one, cause well, we're not really looking to actually do a proper mission with this, we're just looking to get a interesting little test. And why, that that is something I keep having happening to me, that the it inflates itself. Oh, I should've added. <laughs> I should have added some um, stability enhancers. Well, we'll just restart launch and go. But yes, I've been having this problem with the heat shield. It keeps inflating on launch for some reason. But let's revert to launch again here and just throttle up and move before we tip over. That is, of course, the problem with that bit at the bottom. And let us launch in three, two, one, go. Perfect. And there we are off with our beautiful engines, and as you can see, the very cool uh, 
solid rocket boosters with their very nice particle effect. I do quite like them, especially with how they do sort of have the engines pointing outward a bit, which is nice. And if you have them all around, it should add a little bit of extra stability to your flight, which is always handy and uh, just convenient to have overall. And plus, I mean, they're just cool solid rocket boosters. But let us actually cut these. Oop, nope, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do that key. There we go. And hopefully, you know, turning or decoupling these solid rocket boosters won't kill us here. Perfect, it didn't. And let us decouple so we can then fire up these four smaller engines there. Very nice little effect, good particles on them. And uh, let us open the fairing for the hell of it. There we go, they are free, perfect. Okay, so now all we have left to do is cut these engines, decouple once more, sort of uh, rotate ourselves to get away from this thing, and now we can turn on the heat shield. Beautiful. There we go, nicely opening, perfect, perfect, good. And turn off the SAS, so now it's basically <laughs> uh, kind of acting as almost a sail. Nice, nice. But let's uh, let's release the parachutes. There we go, and that's what I meant by the more rectangular looking parachutes of these things. A very cool design to them. I do like them. I uh, love the thickness to them. Very interesting. Now it'd be fun if we could actually pilot them a bit more. I mean, that's supposed to be sort of the point of having parachutes like that, but of course, this is Kerbal Space Program. It's functioning basically like any normal parachute would and just taking us straight down to the ground, which you know what? It's perfectly okay. But yeah, so that is the ULA Vulcan Rocket Parts mod. A very nice pack up. Oh, there we go. We're down to our uh, primary altitude now. So they're both open fully. And we're going to really, really slowly drop now. Perfect. But that is all for this Rocket Parts pack. It's definitely a fun one. It's got some cool parts that, of course, can be used to build the Vulcan or used in tandem with other parts mods to make some more interesting ships. And overall, I think a very fun little pack that you guys should really go and check out. And if you would like to, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next episode but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one